All right, we are live Facebook. Hope everyone had an amazing day. Hope you guys liked Jack Delos last week. Uh, definitely really enjoyed having a conversation with him uh, last week. So this week, the main focus is all about sales. Uh, it's kind of what we do here down at Spartan Elite. Uh, I've been doing sales for probably about eight or nine years. That's a coffee machine. <laughs> uh, and I guess it's something that I've really kind of uh, got a good grasp on it. And I know a lot of people out there within the business world, whether they're setting up, their own business, uh, setting up a new business, whether they're entrepreneurs, whether they're going for promotion, whatever it happens to be, there's a lot of people out there that really find salespeople uh, hard to get along with and seriously don't want to call themselves a salesperson because of the, I guess, neg negative connotations and misconceptions and those things. So let me go through a few things. Maybe there are some misconceptions in regards to um, the sales industry. I know there's a lot of people out there that do run sales in regards to a very ethical background, you know, obviously serving the customer first. There are obviously the, uh, what probably you, would you call the underbelly, the Wolf of Wall Streets. Um, you do also find that those types of companies, businesses, um, people in sales have a very short term business plan. Having a very short term business plan normally ends up having a uh, negative outcome when it comes to business or you know um, you make a lot of money in that type of industry so first of all what I would encourage you guys to do is have a uh, think about what the type what sales is all about a lot of people are going to think sales are very manipulative um, I think it's only a manipulation if you're the only person that wins in the uh, outcome or the result so if you're the sort of person that is looking to serve the customer first and add value to that business, that product, that company, whatever it happens to be, even if you're not in business, add uh, value to um, you know, the workplace, whatever, I think that's all what sales is. So sales is not necessarily a manipulation unless you're the only one that gains out of that. I think sales is definitely influencing them to make a good decision for both them and for you. I think that's sales, what sales is all about. So if you break down sales, what is sales? Well, sales is purely a communication uh, forum between two parties or three parties or whatever. So for me, sales is me going towards a customer, going to a business, supporting a small business. That's what sales is. So for me, it's about adding value to that, to that business and then also then trusting me with that value that I'm gonna to add to them. So to me, it's all about communication. You find, can anyone sell? Absolutely anyone out there can sell. Uh, the best sales people are the ones that have maybe not necessarily more life experience, but that understand how customers work, they understand how people work. I think they're actually good at sales and it's just about communicating. So I think if you meet the customer, if you meet that business, if you meet the boss where they are, you'll find that your sale, let's say, um, will go a lot much, lot, lot much, much smoother. Sales is everywhere. Uh, where do you sell? When you are uh, in a business, you're selling products or services. If you work on commission, you're selling products or services, no matter what. If you're going for a promotion, you better be able to sell yourself to get that promotion, be the person of influence, maybe quite persuasive, don't know how you get promotions, but it doesn't really matter. Um, what else? Sales is in a nightclub, you meet someone at a bar, you better sell yourself very well. Hopefully you don't sell yourself too cheaply or too short. Um, if it's five o'clock and that's the only one left, maybe your sales process doesn't need to be that good. But in regards to sales, you're always selling yourself in any type of environment. If you want to buy a car, well, if you want it for a cheaper price, i.e. the, the uh, car dealership goes at high, you pitch low and you probably meet in the middle where both of you actually want to meet. But otherwise, if you're not good at sales or influence or persuading, then you'll probably pay a little bit more for what that. That, that product actually is, yeah? So sales is all about communication. So first of all, I encourage you to think very differently about how you think or how you feel or how you perceive a sales person to start with. If you see sales as a very manipulative, uh, one-sided argument where it's a win-lose situation, i.e. the sales person wins and the customer loses, you'll find that your thought process, feelings and emotions, behaviors, I know we've already gone through this before, your actions and results will feed off that 100%. Okay, uh, I've heard of companies selling you know, telecommunications and they're selling broadband to customers, to all people that don't have a computer. 
That to me is not sales. I think that is horrible. I think that's very unethical. If you need to sell to, you know, grandma, grandpa, a broadband package to make an extra 50 bucks and you're that bad at sales, then I think you shouldn't be in sales as, a, as an industry because you're clearly not very good at sales. Yeah, I think you don't need to sell to old people that don't have computers, broadband packages because I think that's pathetic. Yeah, but if you're actually adding value, giving them better products, and also I think great salespeople or great people in business as a whole will see their product. Let's say if you, let's say we'll take broadband for instance. If I can't actually add value to that customer with my product, then I should tell the customer to go somewhere else to get better value for the product they actually needed. That to me is a good salesperson. That's how you have a customer for life because it's not about just the short term plan, it's a long term plan as in its entirety, but it's also the ethics and the integrity in which you run your business or which you run your life. I think that's really important. So your thoughts, if you have a negative outcome, you hate sales, when you walk into a cold call, a business to sell your product, service, whatever it happens to be, and you hate being that sales, that pushy, aggressive salesperson, you don't like cold calling, whatever it happens to be, I think if you're thinking that way, your feelings, your emotions, your behaviors are gonna reflect that. So when you walk into a business and you're dealing with the company owner, the business owner, whatever it happens to be, the manager director, the guy that's in charge of marketing or publication or whatever, you'll find that your energy, your behaviors, your emotions, your feelings behind your certainty in regards to your own product is gonna be quite low. If your feeling behind your own product is gonna be quite low, how do you think you're gonna act? How do you think you're gonna be perceived? How do you think you're gonna be able to sell that product? It's gonna be very, very difficult, which means your result is probably gonna be quite negative, and that is itself a family prophecy saying, see, I told you I couldn't sell to that business because I knew they wouldn't buy from me. Yeah, so change your thought process at first. Most people are going to be focused on, you know, I know um, Peter Laverick and the Entourage, uh, the EDC in Melbourne, Sydney, they do a lot of work with this, obviously, in regards to opening strategies and those things. So changing, working what they call it, working above the line, working on thought processes, working on more positive outcomes comes from the thought process, the emotions, and the feelings, and your uh, behaviors to start with, rather than working on your actions first, okay? So, going for a job interview, you're in sales. Uh, it's amazing, obviously we do a lot of recruitment here. It's amazing how many people come into a new workplace or they're looking for a new opportunity in the workplace and they couldn't sell themselves to save themselves. Um, please don't rely on a resume to sell yourself. In fact, most times by the time I get someone into my business, I've looked at the resume and I chuck it in the bin because it doesn't mean anything to me. Um, the reason for that, I've actually read resumes that actually have insert name here. It's a complete template. They probably didn't write it themselves. It's an absolute waste of my time. I'd rather talk to them, ask them questions. You've got to be able to sell yourself to them, yeah, to the, to the business owner. So first of all, you want to have what I call the ACE principle. First of all, you want to be approachable, open by language. Big smile, yeah, friendly, non-threatening, yeah. If you're approachable, what do you think the customer, business owner, boss, whatever, person at the bar, <laughs> do you reckon, how do you reckon they're gonna feed off that type of energy? Positive, negative, well, it comes from yourself first, yeah? The next one's gonna be confidence. People love people that are confident. If you're not confident selling your product, if you're not confident asking for that promotion, if you're not confident asking for that pay rise, going through your KPIs, hey, this is X, Y, Z. Also, when you are going for a pay rise, what do you think businesses are looking for? Value first, add value first, then you can ask for a pay rise. Don't ask for a pay rise because you've been there so time served. Yeah, I do find it quite funny when people ask or people that are in business ask for a bit of support. They go, I'm, I've worked in this company for four years. Do you reckon I can ask for a pay rise? I ask them, what value have you added to that business extra, above and beyond your role, your set role? Nothing fantastic, you get the base rate, that's what I think you deserve, yeah? You add, gotta add more value for a period of time, show that you're more productive, if you're more productive and more profitable for the business, that's where the money comes from, it's pretty, it's pretty simple, yeah? Confidence comes, so this is all about your smile, and your first impression. You don't get a, chance, a second chance at a first impression, that's, called a first, that's why it's called a first impression. If it was called a let's see how we go, and if I have a better chance I can do a second impression, that's not called that, that's called a first impression. 
Confidence is all about eye contact. If you're in sales, really simple, I would encourage you to look in the pupil. You should feel a connection with the customer. If you need more help, email me and I can go through a few things and different uh, techniques and strategies you can actually implement. Upskill yourself, a few little games you can actually use to increase your confidence in regards to the eye contact. If you're talking to someone that's not very confident, it's gonna be very, very hard for them to look in your eye. Yeah, not honest people. Honesty, your confidence comes out of that. Trustworthiness, um, all those sort of things is all that eye contact, okay? The last one is engagement. I don't know if you can see that on there. I know they're right, quite small up in there. <laughs> and this is your enthusiasm. Enthusiasm rubs off, we know that is basics of sales. So this is about your ace principle. How do you ace your first impression? You need to be approachable, open body language, friend or foe, don't shoot. I'm not here to hurt you, no weapons here. That's literally the start of sales. Your confidence comes from your eye contact because people feed off your confidence. You're very unlikely you're going to sell a product if you're not confident in your own product. And I would very much find it difficult anyone to sell their sell their own product at a very high level um, if they're not confident in their own product, if they don't like their own product. Yeah. I also say that if you are in sales, I highly advise that you have the product that you're selling in your house, in your business, whatever it happens to be. So if you're having if you're using broadband, then you would have that broadband in your house for home. Uh, unless your bandwidth needs to be more or whatever. But I would highly advise, have the product that you're selling at home, use it, you should be the first person to have the testimonial for that product. And engagement comes from, are you engaging? Every now and then you hear in sales, I'm just not interested. All that means you're not interesting enough to talk to, to to begin with, that's what I think. I think that most of the products out there on the market should be interesting enough to at least have a conversation about. Sales is not about selling, it's about having a conversation, communicating with people on the level that they want to be communicated with, at, for, and all those sort of things. Um, if you didn't need any more information about sales, I'm gonna go through a few more things when it comes to sales. That's a very, very basic of what we go through here at Spartan Link, Spartan Alliance. If you wanna know more, if you need to know more, shoot me an email, julian at spartanelite.com.au. Hope you guys got something out of it. Hope to see you guys very, very soon. Hear from you guys. Thank you for all the messages, emails, Facebook, Messenger, whatever you guys, how you guys are contacting me. Absolutely love uh, getting back to you guys, so keep them coming. I really appreciate that. Have an amazing week, and next week we'll go through some more sales stuff. Thanks, guys. Take it easy.